Yo, yo, yo! Boys and girls, it's your boy Peter here, aka Peter Freak Out 10, motherfuckers! Bring you guys our episode of Video Game Time, where the good games are always reviewed. Alright, now on today's video, we're gonna take a look at a game that. Uh, we're going to review very differently today because usually in my videos, I like to talk about games separately. I mean, with movies, I have done that. But considering that the expansions to these games are all part of the base game, I figured why not put it all into one video and talk about them side by side. And at the end of the video, they're all going to get their own ratings because they're basically the same game and two review them all in their own video because they're all basically playing the same and I'm going to get my thoughts on those and I really feel like it's good enough to give them all one video because they all tie into each other as well and I was meaning to get this done right before the sequel which I have been playing recently but I really wanted to get the first one reviewed right before I actually dove into the second one because this is a game that I've been meaning to talk about for a long ass time. This is a game that came out of nowhere. It was a game that nobody knew the effect it would have on the first person shooter genre, gaming in general, and just people's view on how to make a first person shooter fun, especially with the implementations it made with its mechanics. And this was all pre-COD 4 and pre-Bioshock. And that's saying a lot when it came out before those games. And it's coming from a company that I think has a good hand in first-person shooters and has a good hand in these types of games. And it's easy to see why, because I've reviewed one of their other games before and its sequel as well, but this definitely shows the talent they have going with that company. And what game is that, you may be asking? That game is none other than Fear, First Encounter Assault Recon. And yeah, you see what version I played it on. I'm going to get to that later. But along with that, we also got Fear Files. This is the expansions that they did for Fear. This was originally made for the PC, but... Pretty much afterwards, they ported it all into 360. This was how I played these games. But yeah, for those who don't know what fear is and need some reason to play it, well, I'm the man to do that. Grab a seat, grab whatever weapon you have, grab your reflex injectors, and get the slow-mo going, because we're about to take down some soldiers. Let's see what makes fear the classic it is today. Now, before I go any further, before I actually get into the review of talking about these games well specifically they're all basically one game because the expansions here add some little features but they're basically a continuation and i'll get into that later but basically what's about to come up is the release dates for these games and they may come off very sporadic that has to do with uh, the console ports with these games and how far apart they came out from each other so Basically why the, I'm mentioning different release dates is because of the console ports and they have some minor differences but not too much to notice, at least not that I know personally. I know some fear purists are going to basically get on and basically be like, I noticed this and that, but I'll get into those later. But starting off, the base game, Fear, this was, or First Encounter Assault Recon, however you want to say it. I'm just going to call it Fear. But Fear was a game made in 2005, and basically, it was developed by Monolith Productions. Now, Monolith Productions, these are some people who've had a hand in some great FPS games, like Aliens vs. Predator 2. Condemned 1 and 2 is one that they also did, and that's the one that got them into the big times. I love Condemned, and Condemned 2 I like, but not as much as the first, but it had some better gameplay, though. But along with that, after they did those games, they also did Fear 2, which I have been playing recently, and I'll review that when I beat it and play more of the multiplayer. Now, this game was released for the PC in 2005, and then a year later on Halloween, it came out for the 360, which I have right here. And there's a story why I actually have this for the 360 and not the PC. And then a year after that, it came out in 2007 for the PS3. Now... 
with the expansion packs, Extraction Point uh, came out for the PC around the same time in 2006. Uh, Fear came out for the Xbox 360. And then a year after that, in 2007, we got Perseus Mandate, uh, both of which would be made into this, this one game called Fear Files, all on the Xbox 360. There was a plan to port these to the PS3, but that plan never came through. I don't know why. But the idea for this game first came about after Monolith finished their work on a game called Shogo, which I've never played, and they were looking to get another game going, and they were looking to do a game where the main character felt like the hero of his own action movie, as they were huge fans of John Woo movies and The Matrix, which is where the idea for the reflex time in these games came from, which is basically the slow-mo bullet time, similar to... Uh, the Matrix and Max Payne. Along with that, they also wanted to incorporate Asian horror into the mix, as they were also horror fans, using Japanese horror such as the original Grudge, Ringu, and its American remake, The Ring, The Eye, and among many others, which also applies to the score a little bit in these games, as it was inspired by those movies. And when it came to establishing the atmosphere, all of which would be done, which the help of the lit tech engine and the revamped AI system that the team worked very hard to make them look, feel, and act realistic beyond anything that was out at the time in a video game. They managed to do that with this system called Goop, which would later be used in Condemned 2, and it would be used in the sequel, Fear 2. And after the release of the first game, the team at Monolith found themselves getting involved in rights issues as fear was being argued over who owned the rights as they were getting a sequel going. So they gave the job to Time Gauge Studios to which Monolith approved their story for Extraction Point. And their attention was to address the criticisms that people had about the original fear and really fix it. All the while, Percy's mandate, their whole spiel was to make the game feel like its own story while also continuing the story from the base game and Extraction Point. But eventually, they all finished up their games and each had been showing off at E3 Fear in 2005, Extraction Point in 2006, and Perseus Mandate in 2007. And with the with all these games combined, the original came out on October 18, 2005, and it was a smashing hit for Monolith. With combined sales from every console port made for it, the game achieved over 2 million copies with these games, to be more precise, getting their own numbers. On top of that, the game was a critical success. On Metacritic for uh, the first fear, this game has an 88 out of 100, with the Xbox 360 being an 85 out of 100, with the PS3 version being the lowest rated of a 72 out of 100. And I think the reason why is because from what I've heard on forums, this one is the thing that was basically what the PS3 ported over. It wasn't a direct port of the PC version like the 360 was, which I don't know why they didn't do that. As much as I have some things to say about the console version, I think it's stupid that they didn't just directly port the PC version to the PS3, considering how powerful the fucking thing is and considering how long it takes to develop shit for that. Uh, it's just amazing that it didn't finish it like they did with uh, this version, considering it's on a less powerful hardware, the 360. But uh, in general, Fear was praised for its graphics, gameplay, the biggest thing being the AI, which to many critics was groundbreaking. However, criticism was leveled at the game's repetitive environments and the story, which I do and don't disagree with. Uh, to a certain point, I kind of agree with them, but then to a certain to extent, mostly I don't agree with them. But also as criticism was leveled at Day One Studios, the people who uh, made this version, 
that being said, the game itself was just revolutionary for PC users, and it was considered a hardware pusher for PC gaming until it was dethroned by Crisis. That being said, with Extraction Point, on the other hand, while that received positive reviews, and on Metacritic as a 75 out of 100, with praise being directed towards the horror elements, which they found superior in this one to the base game, and, and the fact that they fixed the criticism of the bland environments, some still felt that the story was lacking. But, that being said, Perseus Mandate was the lowest rated of these three games. On Metacritic, it has a 61 out of 100. Critics who, while they enjoyed the new guns, they didn't feel like it added anything new to fear, and they felt it was too identical to the base game. Besides all that, though, the game itself was awarded various awards and is considered by many people to be one of the greatest first-person shooters ever made. And it is easy to see that, based on the fact that fear was everywhere. Every magazine had it. A lot of people were talking about it. It was just one of those games that it took the world by surprise when it came out. Uh, I didn't even think this game would ever be as game-breaking as it was when it came out. Uh, when it was first announced at E3 2004, I thought it was just going to be another shooter. It didn't really rock my world or anything. The bullet time mechanic, while it looked interesting, it just was like, yeah, I've seen this done before. It was done better in Max Payne. But more trailers started to show up and it started to show off more of the horror side because the older trailers really wanted to show more of the action side and basically that was just sort of like oh, okay that's another shooty I really didn't feel like it would give me anything but the more the horror side started to show up I figured you know what I'll give this a play and when the game came out uh, it was getting all this praise all the cover stories it got it was just so hard to avoid it, the game. I didn't get around to playing it because at the time, I had a horrible PC. As you guys know, it was that laptop that I showed in my Far Cry review. That was the main reason I got it was for that game. And, and that's so weird because I could get games like Doom 3, Far Cry, and Half-Life 2 running on it. But I could get big games like this because the lag would drop. Even, like when I tried, even when I got my PC version of COD 4, that was like shit on it i couldn't run any big games on it like i could now because as you guys know i got a much better pc but when they announced it was coming to 360 i had to wait over a year to play it and by that time they had announced an expansion was right around the corner with these games and just after a year of people raving about how fantastic this game was and how it was game changing i finally got around to playing it and they weren't wrong this game is fantastic, and my initial impressions were dead wrong. This is deserving of all the praise and love it is getting. Even just playing it on the 360, which is what I did first, even though I got the PC version on Steam, even though I did that later, the Xbox 360 version playing it isn't as bad as a lot of people have said, and it just it shows the talent that Monolith has especially with how they managed to combine John Woo style action with horror to which they did so fucking well in this game it's amazing especially with how they stepped away from what they did with Condemned it doesn't feel like they're going back into that route and everything and this is what the fucking Alone in the Dark movie with Uva Bowl I feel that's what this was trying to be. But to me, this did it so much better. And it's also kind of a better version of Jericho. A game that has an amazing idea in Clive Barker's imagery, which I love, but the gameplay needed some fine-tuning. This is what that game really wanted to be. And I could definitely see the reason why it's becoming a cult classic in the first-person shooter genre. And considered one of the greatest shooters of this generation. And I'll get into those reasons why later. But when you move on to the expansions with Fear Files, whereas Extraction Point, it's good. It's not as good as the base game, but it has its moments. But Perseus Mandate, I'm going to say this right now, this closes the series or this whole game with a whimper. 
despite there being some good ideas to it. Uh, it was just so bland and forgettable. Well, which is why when I turned on Fear 2, I'm going to get some negative feedback from people at my computer who are like, how dare you? And you'll see that later. But I'll get into Fear 2 another time. Right now, we're talking about these. But basically, the plot of Fear, the base game, is basically you are the role of a man named Point Man who is a part of this department called Fear, which stands for First Encounter Assault Recon, an organization that was started back in 2002 that basically combats paranormal threats going on in the world. And we learn in this fictional city called Fairport, there is this organization that basically designs weapons for the military called Armacam. And they basically been using these paranormal entities going on in the world to give their weapons the power they feel will make their weapons stronger. And one of the things that they've been testing on is this little girl named Alma, who's the daughter of Dr. Harlan Wade, one of the scientists there. And basically, he forced her into an experiment and has made her the guinea pig for the longest time. So much so, she's been in there and basically, she's trapped in there. And another person they've been doing it on is this man named Paxton Fettel, who they are using to try use his telekinetic abilities and his he basically also has some mind control stuff he basically wants to basically break out but they are using him to communicate to these clone soldiers telepathically so he can lead them to victory but he also is a cannibal and basically one night Alma communicates with Paxton telepathically and she breaks him out of his cell, reawakens the soldiers and they basically go about slaughtering Armacam and Fear gets word of it and you along with other members you're working with like this woman named Sin Juan Kwan, I really don't know how to say her name because yeah, she is Asian. <laughs> And this other guy, Spencer, you all set out to basically stop him. All the while, you're suffering from visions of Alma. And as the game goes along, you discover you have some sort of connection with Alma and Paxton. Both of which I won't spoil because as loved as the game is, I know there are some people who haven't played it. And when you see that ending, oh my god, it is so shocking. Right before Bioshock, this had a... Just a shocking ending that I didn't see coming. I definitely think Bioshock is a little bit better, but this definitely has an ending. I was like, wow. And that being said, that's the base game. The story continues in Extraction Point, which I won't spoil the ending to, because where this game begins is where this one ends. And basically, it finishes up the Point Man story, where you're going to basically take out the remaining members of Armacam all the while you're trying to get to this helicopter to get out of the city. And then you get Perseus Mandate, which has you assuming the role of an unnamed sergeant who's a part of the same fear team. And basically this is going on as the events in the first game are going on. And basically... He gets caught up in this hysteria and he himself is being haunted by visions of Alma and Paxson himself. And basically he's on this race to basically find and destroy Alma's genes before another group gets to it. Will each group be able to find the secret to stopping Alma? Or will all of them be found with their skin and bones charred like barbecue? Now this is going to be an interesting review because you could pretty much look at the base game and the expansion packs and kind of get the idea. With the expansion packs, they might come across as just cut levels that didn't make it into the base game while they were making it. And while, yes, it does come across that way, in fact, the only way these two games, or these three games, because this technically has three in it, the only way these three games differ from one another is the fact that there is in graphics and story. With that said, there are some differences between the games. But all that aside, I just want to focus on fear as a whole. 
and if it's a good game or not. And the answer to that is a resounding yes. Even with some of the low points caused by specific points in the game's expansion that we'll get to, Fear is a game that on paper and a pitch meeting sounds like the most uneven game ever made. But when you sit down and play it, it really starts working. And it really feels like Monolith took a concept as ridiculous as a John Woo-themed Asian horror game, ran with it, didn't lose breath, and made it work. And I think what makes the game work in the base game is its story. For what this game was going for, Fear has a really interesting story. I like the fact that people made this group to combat paranormal threats and the game itself makes an attempt to develop what this organization is and who it works with so it does feel like there is an emphasis on story in that area and developing its characters and once again i know there are some people who aren't fans of silent protagonists but i love that they did that in this game. It makes you feel like you are Point Man. Even without him talking, there's still a sense of chemistry between him and his teammates. So you won't get a sense that they're just there to spray bullets at enemies and at nothing else. So the game has more of a setup and a backstory for its characters. And I like how the story goes along and how you learn more about him. And at the end, that surprise ending really does get to you. And it really makes the characters likable. You really care about what happens to them. And as the story goes along, you do feel, even though these guys didn't know each other for that long, you still feel like there's a sense of friendship and teamwork with these characters. And it was just, it was handled really well. And I really like how this game handles its characters and how they're written. So yeah, the characters are really likable. Something you really need for a horror game like this. Uh, and speaking of horror, the horror section itself, even though it may seem like an idea that's done to death about how this group is using paranormal to basically create weapons, uh, and that would make the military stronger. I like how it does it with the combination of horror and action. And how it was able to strike a balance between the two without coming off as silly in a way alone in the dark got silly. This definitely has people that I feel understand the balance better. Almost in the same way Aliens did it. Aliens did that perfectly. And Blade did that perfectly. This kind of... While not in the same vein, it kind of has that same energy those did. And even though in Fear 2, they do explain a little bit about Alma, which I appreciate because in that game, they gave her this interesting story that I really liked. Here though, what I am going to say is I like how little is known about Alma and Point Man till the end, therefore making their presence really creepy. And there's some really messed up moments in this game. Right from the moment when the game opens with that scene with Paxton in his cell. And he's like, it's like, na, 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 na. And she's opening the, the cell and he's sitting there like this. Like, kill him, kill him. Ah! And it's fear. And then the armor camp soldiers wake up and they're slaughtering them. And they're going about killing everybody, slices a dude's throat. Uh, it's just an awesome opening. And with that image of an eye and Alma walking towards the camera, the fire, you get really immersed in the game's tone and story. It's clear horror is on this game's mind. Though it may not seem like it is, it is there through and through. And I like the fact that this game gives you this power of slowing down st time and slowing down the fight sections for you to kill them and giving you these guns that will do all sorts of damage. But you still feel invulnerable to these soldiers who can see through these advantages and find a way to kill you. That's what I love about how they did it in this game. The soldiers just don't feel like uh, targets. Uh, they're not bullet spongy, but they are hard to kill. So yeah. And that's especially true in the game's AI, which is why it's so good. And I'll get to that later. But you feel like you're fighting real humans who can be smarter than you. 
And I think they did that aspect well. And I think because of the energy in the gameplay, the game moves at a fast pace. It never stops moving. You still get a sense of story, though. It doesn't feel like... Uh, like it's talky, like some like some people had a problem with COD Four. They it doesn't feel that talky, but I still, even though I love COD Four, I I do appreciate that this game was able to balance both, and you always feel like there's something to shoot, and the development of these characters, while told from an earpiece or you trying to figure it out yourself, it's still handles it in a way where you learn enough about them and i appreciate the fact that they made you have to go and figure it out yourself an element of the gameplay that i'll get into it's not the deepest story ever being that they're pushing towards the fear of the unknown angle to a point through the roof uh, which is something i love about fear 2 which is why i do kind of give a cinch to fear 2 story over this one but that being said, I do like how they did it in this game. And if you don't go in expecting a deep story, you are going to be scared being that you don't know what's going on. And it has a lot to offer. And if you don't feel like you had enough fear, no pun intended, to keep you up in the night, there's also the expansions here. Extraction and Perseus, uh, which finishes up the Point Man story, basically doing it in a way that I felt I like. I'm going to say I like the story of Extraction Point. I do appreciate that they went more with the horror in this one, which you could definitely see that monolith look towards when they were doing Fear 2. I definitely think that this does the horror elements well. And there are some really creepy moments in this game, like the church, that was a crazy part, or the subway. It definitely has some great moments like that. Does it feel like it's action-oriented? But a problem that I do have with the game is its ending. It ends on such a downer note that I just, I didn't bring myself to like it as much as I felt I could have. It ends in a way where I'm just like, really? That's how it ends? And I know some person said like, well, that's life. Life sucks. You need a game to tell you life sucks like this, especially a horror game. Yeah, there are horror stuff that do it. But you know what? This is the same game where you slow down time, shoot up stuff, shoot people in the head, and they go fly. I don't think realism is needed in an expansion pack like this. Those areas, to me, make it feel inferior to the base game. And I really don't feel it was as strong there as it is in the main game. Thankfully, I'm going to say this, Fear 2 makes this non-canon, so it does make it a little bit easier to play this, uh, this, so I'm not as mad as I was with it originally, as... I now look at it like a what if this happened. But I play games to escape life and it shouldn't basically, it shouldn't end on this note where it's like life sucks. Yeah, there's some things where it worked, but here it didn't need to do that. It doesn't apply to the gameplay though. That I'll get to later. But then you get to Perseus Mandate. Oh my God, this one is the worst of the three. As I don't understand what they were doing with this game. It just feels like it came off as a cookie cutter remake of the base game, only with less interesting characters and so at some points copy and paste environments that in some area feel rushed and goes more into action than Extraction Point does. And that was a big mistake. It's very clear that Monolith just wanted to finish up the original Fear story as they were working on Condemned 2 and its sequel, so they just said, okay, TimeGate, do it. Which, TimeGate, shut the fuck up about how, oh, because I know some people involved with Perseus Mandate were like shitting on Fear 2. Shut the fuck up. Like, you guys did anything better. But yeah, it just felt like a game that had a story that they just we're throwing at the wall to see what sticks and it just it doesn't work and it's easy to see why it's non-canon now 
So the story itself for these games, they have their ups and downs thanks to the expansion packs. Uh, but even with the weakest points, I could just sit back and be like, okay, these may have their problems. I may not like them, but they are good setups to go and cause chaos. As even with the low points in the expansion packs, uh, they do have some good moments. And even if you don't like where they go with them, you'll be shocked as to where they do go. But moving on to the aspect that everybody talks about with this game is the technical side. Uh, and the graphics for both Fear and Fear Extraction Point are fantastic. Uh, it's easy to see that why this was released on pre-C, it was so acclaimed. These graphics were considered groundbreaking for their time. And Fear's engine makes use of the hardware that Monolith made for this game. The one thing I do want to say to people who have played this on PC or are going to play this on PC because I made this mistake when I first got it and it's probably in the other room, but um, I got this on PC and I had a Logitech mouse. It's not this one, but I had a Logitech mouse that I'm not using now because when I played this game on PC, the frame rate would drop to like one or 10. That is how much Logitech hardware does not get along with it. I can confirm this because I've played it. A lot of people have pointed it out too, and I can confirm it's true. It does not get along with that. But with that said, playing it on PC, from what i played of it, runs great. Uh, and on this new PC right here, it runs very well, great frames. Uh, but if you're one of those people who don't have a PC and you want to get an Xbox 360 version... Yeah, like I did at first, you're still going to get a great game. You're going to get a fantastic looking game, even though they did improve on the graphics and the sequel. Here, they still look great. Uh, it isn't as varied in its environments as one would hope, because most of the time you'll be fighting in office buildings, loading docks. Uh, that being said, the locations themselves are very well designed. Before COD 4, to me personally, this was some of the best lighting and shadow effects I've seen in a game. And they still hold up. They're still second place to COD 4. And I like how at some points in these games, you'll get visions of Alma coming about. A lot of points, you'll find yourself jumping out of your seats because they happen at the most perfect moments. It is going to scare you, regardless if, if you've seen so many horror films or not, including me, because it did it to me. Like the infamous ladder part where you go down the ladder and she's standing there. I even That part, I know a lot of people who are the most brave people when it comes to horror games and movies, they jumped at it. My favorite scene, though, is one of the visions you have where you're in that pool of blood and that dude comes out of the water and jumps out at you. That scared the shit out of me. Shit was coming out of my ass like a fucking nuke. <laughs> That's how crazy it was. So yeah, it may come across like the levels are less than varied and it may seem boring, but the game's engine helps the game ooze with atmosphere and it makes these levels that would seem repetitive at least have something to remember when you're playing it. Because where the game's engine really works best is in the action-oriented parts. Because the graphics are a sight to behold in those parts. The slow-mo effect is fantastic. Uh, when it slows down time, you literally feel like you're slowing down in all three games. And in those moments, you get some awesome effects when you fight or shoot. Like, these effects let you know you are causing damage. Like, you'll get particle effects if you shoot a computer... Papers will fly everywhere. Chunks of the wall will fly off. If you shoot a human at any part of the body or a clone, they will go flying across the room. You you could shoot a torso and it'll come off. Uh, this is definitely going for it with the blood and the gore. So it is a, definitely a bloody game. Definitely not one for kids, especially these games. But you really feel like you're causing destruction in this game. Uh, Definitely some of the best physics in a game that have that same sort of John Woo style since Max Payne. And even just playing it on 360, minus some stuff scaled back, the frame rate still remains solid, like the PC version. It doesn't slow down during the action. I know some fear aficionados may notice some difference they may have, and they may say, but it was scaled back there and there. 
there so it could fit on the console but it doesn't feel like a different game hell this one has an extra level well in it which i find very cool where you basically escort this guy out of a out of a building but yeah it definitely is not that bad even playing it on 360 and it still offers up a lot and the character models i think look great they have expressive faces lifelike movement the enemy variety may be on the lighter side where all you'll be doing is fighting the clones, uh, which are basically these guys or some ghosts or even Alma herself at some parts. They still get the job done for what they were going for. And the voice acting is very good. Definitely very good. It's not Oscar worthy, and I do think the sequel has better voice acting. But they do good. Uh, some good people in here like David Scully, Andreas Sogiloso. And they all do well for what they were giving. And it is easy to see why this game was groundbreaking in terms of graphics. That being said, extraction point of these games before Fear 2, I think, is the best looking one. The character models look much better. The guns look better. And the locations themselves, while not as varied once again as I would have wanted them to, they at least put some effort into not making the game set in office buildings, but at least went into subways and various other locations. And they're fun to explore. The frame rate here also made solid as well. So yeah, if you're a graphics guy and you want to see the best looking game of these these games, uh, Extraction Point's definitely the one to go for. The worst of the three, though, is Percy's Mandate. The graphics in this one look worse than the other two. Character models look like mannequins. Animations for them are worse. The guns are the worst looking guns of the three games. Disregarding the weapons themselves and playing with them. The voice acting is subpar. The lighting is gone. It's very clear that this was rushed uh, to get it over with in time for Condemned 2 and Fear 2. So they just said like, yeah, do that. That looks good. And they're not even subtle about hiding how bad it looks. It's bad right off the bat. With that said, ignoring that, it is easy to see why Fear on its own was considered groundbreaking with its technology on the engine it had. Uh, and while Percy's mandate may be the worst looking, it doesn't take away from the greatness that Fear and Extraction Point had. Uh, and it's definitely one that even without extraction point, you still get a lot of eye candy. So if that's your thing, definitely go for that too. But you know what? Even with these games having their differences in the technical side of things, the one thing that doesn't change between these games is the gameplay. Because the game itself, you guys know, it's a first-person shooter where you basically are put in an environment and you go from room to room shooting stuff. Uh, and basically, the game itself... Even with that, it's more in line with, say, Doom or Quake rather than, say, Call of Duty 4. As your only objective is to basically go from room to room gunning down enemies till you reach a point in the level. And while that may seem repetitive to some because the game is light on objectives, uh, on, like, say, Time Shift or Medal of Honor Frontline... Once in a while, you may have something you may have to do, like clear an area for a helicopter to land, or once in a while, there will be a puzzle you'll have to solve. Like at one point, you have to pull a lever to basically get a bridge straight across or drain this this tub to basically get into it so you can get under, under it. Once in a while, there will be a boss battle where you'll have to fight these mech suits. But I think calling this repetitive and ranting and raving would be my objective if the fun factor was low. But that's obviously not the case because it's as tall as a building. Going through a room and blasting a ton of enemies is so satisfying in these games. And the game control's great. It does feel a little bit light at some points. It's not as weighty as, say, um, Fear 2, because Fear 2, I felt like you had a little bit more weight on you, and even Condemned 2. But it doesn't feel floaty like the Turok reboot. With that said, you still feel like you're holding a gun and the weight of the gun as you're shooting. So it's not all bad. I just wish you felt like you were moving just a teetsy bit more with some weight on it. Uh, 
With that said, though, the shooting is great in each of these games, and you'll get a great arsenal of weapons at your disposal. You'll get the usual weapons you've seen in other games, like shotguns, machine guns, pistols, which you can do wield in these games. But this game also implements some awesome weapons in each of these games, this one and the expansions. Like this weapon called the Penetrator, which will shoot these bolts that would pin enemies to a wall. There's this weapon called the Particle Beam, which will shoot these weird particle effects. They, they, when you shoot at people, they'll melt into skeletons. In Perseus Mandate, there's a minigun that you can get. Hell, you can even get on this camera and control this turret like a gun and shoot down your enemies. So there's some really creative weapons in these games. And it's the same amount of creativity you would find in a Resistance or a Turok game. And each one packs quite a punch. But along with that, you can also do melee attacks on your enemies like slide kick, jump, or punch them. I like this one where you can just slide kick a door open and kill an enemy behind it. So you approach a level in this game on how you yourself feel you want to take them out. Uh, and it's any way you want. Uh, my favorite way is the slow mode, just going in, guns blazing, which is a lot like Max Payne's bullet time, where it's just like Max Payne. You just push a button and it'll slow down time, give you the ability to kill your enemies, and like blood will fly everywhere. It's so addicting to use in this game. You're not indestructible during these moments, though, because as I said, the soldiers won't go down without a fight, and that's all because the AI is fantastic in these games. Uh, because they are so smart and it's easy to see why people hold this game's AI in such high standards. Each enemy is not dopey, they're always together, even with the sound of you walking or breaking glass, they'll be like, I heard something to their partners. If they see you, they'll retreat, take cover behind something. You really get the idea these are enhanced soldiers. And you could tell Monolith went to great lengths to make sure they were smart. And even in the expansion packs, their intelligence remains. Uh, and there's various difficulties options. So you'll see how smart the AI is on other difficulties. And in all three games, there's stuff to collect for, like there's these phones that you find, blinking red, that you push in, it'll give you a message telling you more about Armacam and the story behind it. A little bit like Metroid Prime a little bit, but there's also reflex injectors to find, which increase how long you can stay in slow mode, and there's injectors that will increase your health. So there's definitely some replay value in this game. However, there's even more of a reason to stay and play this game besides the replay value, and that's because of the multiplayer. Player, which is fun. The challenge here is more equal to that of SOCOM than say Halo 3 or COD 4. So in order to take down an enemy, you have to study an enemy, me a little bit, and you get your usual modes to play in. You can play in ranked or player match. You can play deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the flag. You can't get slow-mo on all of them because you have to choose a particular mode to play and it's fun. I'll say the modes are fun. They're definitely a lot more challenging compared to other games with multiplayer because it could be punishing when you die because it will deduct points when you do die so it can be punishing and you don't rank in this game keep in mind this was before the cod four days that's something fear 2 would implement not to the length of cod 4 but still did it in its own way and i think and i do like how they did it in that one better from what i've played of it so far but the multiplayer is fun. I'm going to say, even without the rank system, it's so fun to play, and it adds a reason to keep playing this these games, and definitely is a lot of fun to be had. Uh, so yeah, it is easy to see why this game is held in such high regard uh, to many people, especially first-person shooter enthusiasts. And even with the low points of the expansions, it is easy to see how the positives outweigh the negatives. Uh, and it definitely is a game that I think offers up a lot. Uh, and most of the cons are definitely front and center with the expansion packs. And I definitely feel those could have been a bit stronger. That's really one of my negatives with the game. But a couple of other annoyances I had with the game were definitely the maps in multiplayer. I thought they could have been a little bit better. I thought that they could have been... They could have had some of the uniquenesses, say, the expansions in this game. Because I was surprised how bland they were. And they just could have done something unique or have less levels from the games. Uh, 
levels and more of unique levels, like horror-themed levels. That I would have liked more. Which, yes, COD 4 did that too, but the maps complemented the game's action and multiplayer. It felt like it tied to COD's world, which it worked there. Here, I just didn't feel like there was anything interesting or any cool ideas for the levels in these games. And they just feel so lazily strung together, like the wooded area. They were just so boring and then not much to them. Also, I can understand some people's criticisms with it, like just this one, even though I do, do think this is a well-playing version, is I did encounter some freezing issues, but that's really all I came across with this. So that knocks a couple points off. But those are just a few problems I had with the game and its expansion packs. All that aside, even with the expansions and their problems, it's easy to see why Fear has such a following from so many people. And it's definitely a game that deserves a play at least once in everybody's life from fans of first-person shooters. It's challenging, it's unique, it's bloody, and even with the downsides of the expansions, it doesn't replace the fun of the gameplay. So yes, I recommend you give Fear a play. All of these, I recommend you give... All around, Fear is definitely one that needs to be played, I gotta say. No matter what console you can get your this game on, you are getting a great game. So, yes, I highly recommend you play Fear. And, and it's, to some extent, the expansion. Just don't go in expecting it to be as amazing as the base game. But other than that, still fantastic games. So when it comes down to giving these games their ratings, starting off with the base game, I give the first fear an 8.9 out of 10, and it deserves it. Therefore, gets the Alexandra seal of approval. Definitely one to check out if you're a fan of horror and action-themed games, or even a fan of John Woo. You'll have a great kick with this game. If it just had a little bit more to it like in some like maybe if it just had a little bit more horror to it just a teensy bit more i think it could have been much better and maybe if the maps were better and maybe if i didn't count those freezing issues it would have gotten a nine but it still is deserving of the seal of approval so yeah it definitely is a great game so yeah that's fear and then you get to the files, and for the first one, I give Extraction Point a 7.9 out of 10. It's a little shy of a way of the seal of approval because of its ending, but it still is a good one. And it definitely has a lot to offer. If you liked the base game, you're really going to like this one. So yeah, that's definitely something to check out if you like uh, the base game, and definitely one that has a lot to offer. Percy's Mandate, though, the worst of them all, 6.5 out of 10. It's slow, mundane, and just boring, and it feels such a step down from the other ones. But yeah, it, it, it's still worth the play if you want to see it finished. Just not one I would get, I would just get it used. Just don't pay full price for it. But all around, Fear is just a fantastic game and definitely easy to see why people hold in such high regard. So yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, and that is my review for Fear. I'm working on playing uh, Fear 2 right now. That I'm going to continue to play a little bit more of that, play some more of the multiplayer so I can really get my thoughts down for that. But next time, I'm going to do a review on Taken because I've been wanting to review that for a while. But I also have a review planned of Wanted. This is one that I'm going to be reviewing after that. And then I'm going to do a review on Call of Duty World of War because I've been wanting to review that. I just beat it recently. So those are what's coming. Taken, Call of Duty 4. And then I have the Friday 13th films because I've been meaning to review them in time for the remake. Uh, um, sadly, never got a, uh, sadly didn't get around to finishing them before the remake. But you'll see my thoughts on those later. With that said, the remake's also going to be reviewed too. But with that said... I will see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Fear. Did you guys enjoy this game? Are you guys playing the sequel right now? I'd love to know you guys' thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on Wonderful World of YouTube. Bye.